so dandelion clock. So the, the fiddly part of this is going to be the detail of that clock because obviously that's the main focus. So we're going to spend loads of time. You know. It just shows we're going to go from a nice orange wash, graduating down into sort of reds, then pinks and finally purples at the bottom. And rich, kind of a yolky orange, isn't it? Mm. Which is, I think is quite close to what we have on the painting. Yeah, mm. very close. But... Uh, cadmium red, ultramarine blue, you get a grey. You can get brown as well, depending on how much red you use. So it's really not a good combination. Um, so quite nice, I like that. So you can see that's very close. Nice clean water. Just lift, I'm going to tilt my paper as well. Um, it just allows everything to move down in the direction that I want it to. Um, I don't want my colours to start moving back up the paper. Give it a bit of a tilt so that you know you haven't got any puddles. You just want a nice even coverage of water to get you started. And hopefully you've drawn your image sort of dark enough that you'll see it through your washes of colour as well. Um, okay, so I want to make sure they're right up to the edges because they are going to dry first. There we go, and now I'm going to dip into my yellow, okay, and I'm going to start top left, drag that colour across, you can go backwards and forwards a little bit, you don't want to do it too much though, try and create a bit of an evenness if you like, so I'm going to put a second application on the top because it's going to dry fast. So I've loaded up that top section with that orange and I'm coming down and I'd say about now I want to mix, I want to start with the pink, I'm going to give it a quick into my pink and bringing that over. Let it really merge with that orange. You see how much paler it is on here because I've wet the paper it's paler and I'm going to bring some of that pink up into the yellow as well so while it's wet you can do that so you want to think about doing that quite quickly so I've brought some of that pink into the yellow of the yellow actually and bring some of that down into my pink as well so we're getting some kind of cloud of a bit more pink now it's coming down the page at the sides but I'm, I'm okay with that now I'm going to start off with my purple, bringing it up into that pink that I've done. And I'm going to bring it up into that a little bit further. And then down. Got to mix up this, but that's all right. And don't forget, we're going to work on this as well in the foreground. Because it's still lovely and lovely and wet. Because I pre-wet it, it's wet enough for me to do this. It's still going to soften up um, before it. See how lovely and stri striking that is against that orange. So it's wet enough to do it. Um, but the top, I do up the tape to stop cauliflowers. So just literally running that uh, paper towel along shapes in the background just sort of some circles leave a bit of light in the middle of the circle okay so you can do some small ones some big ones try and get a variation of size if you can um, get one about here and these will become Trust me, how much further these circles that I popped down have spread and really softened. They're almost like cotton wool balls now, which is exactly what I wanted. Ever use them? A lot of people will use these for um, foliage mm. and things like to get those multiple lines. I mean, it does do it, it just takes a bit longer. Again, you want to use it right on its tip and you flick. The With these brushes, you use it right on its end flick from the centre out but you can see that isn't producing as fine a line as the fan brush and oh, it's right so all I'm going to do I would recommend you first paint your stem and the centre get that painted in then work on what I'm going to show you next 
from, so if I look from where I've drawn my spikes, I've got probably halfway to the line is a straight line, and then the other half distance is this curve with lots of hairs. Halfway out to the edge with my brush like that, and then if I'm using this paintbrush, I would first of all go and paint this lovely sweeping curve. It's a really nice. And then I actually use this brush. Um, you dip it, you just, with these, you only want, really want the paint right at the end of the bristles, right? And you're going to want to sweep it. Oh, it's quite tricky, I would hardly use this brush at all. From, let's go up here. So that first mark, a bit of a sweep, okay dip into the paint. I don't want too much paint on there. Take some off because what you don't want is a big splurge. It's actually 10. I use it for everything. It's got a nice point on it. And um, I'm going into a slightly thicker grey. So at the moment, all I've got is an outer shape. It's probably me. What I want to do is define it a little bit more. So I'm just, okay. And then also you can paint but that gives the basic shape and it gives it three dimensions. So you've got some definition and you've got softness as well. Thank you.